because of who you are I will lift my voice and say Lord I worship you because of who you are
He's my provider, Jehovah Nisi. Lord, you ready in victory, Jehovah Shalom. He's my prince. He's my prince. And Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Dark 
Because it's our purpose to break every chain Every one of us We're called to go out And break every chain and Break every chain Break every chain Break every chain We break every chain Break every chain Sometimes you got to sit back and just be still and, and pray, amen. Sometimes it just, it gets to that point where you try to fight it with your mind. You try to fight it with everything you have in you, everything you can do, amen, and nothing happens. And sometimes you just have to say, I surrender to you, God. I give you everything. I, I give it all to you. I give you those worries. I give you those those things that just are tormenting me, those things that I can't, I can't seem to fix, those things that I can't overcome, those things that I can't fix for those people, those things that I want to fix for those people. You just have to say, I give it to you, Lord. I give it all to you. I rest in you and I surrender. I surrender. And all, and all to Jesus. I Surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. And I surrender all.
Hallelujah. We honor you and we surrender our all to you, Lord. Praise be to God forever. Glory to God. When we call him Lord, we're calling him Master. When we, refer, when we, when we submit to him fully in every arena of life, he is our Lord. Amen? Amen. Turn around and tell us, I surrender to Jesus. Glory to God. You know, not just as an unbeliever coming to the Lord, but as believers continuing our walk with the Lord, we are going to remain surrendered. Amen? Glory to God. Thank you all. Dick, Nathan. Glory to God. Welcome to the um, Sunday before the event. A year ago this time, I was uh, about to go in the hospital. Um, that weekend, I had, my toe had flared up the week before. And then it came through the weekend. Then I, I kicked it on Friday on the step and busted it open. And by Monday, it was black. Um, by Monday, it was black, and I went to the doctor on Tuesday. They put me in the hospital on that Tuesday. So a year ago this Tuesday, um, they put me in the hospital for three days. I came out and came out and preached that Sunday, but we couldn't have the fellowship. I couldn't cook. I just uh, wasn't able to. I was going to try. I actually was going to try, and I got overrode. It's amazing how, how powerful a five-foot, foot, two-inch Cherokee can be. I just want you to know, hallelujah. Um, I honestly was going to try to pull it off, and um, it couldn't be done. So anyway, because I love you guys, I want you all to have my barbecue. So this next Sunday, everybody say next Sunday. Now here's you get a double blessing. Daylight saving time ends next Sunday. So you get an extra hour of sleep. Sunday. Yeah. Huh? We're not in the UK. Okay, well, it's today in the UK. Okay. Okay. So next Sunday, we'll, um, we'll get an extra hour, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll come here, we'll have church, we'll leave, and we'll go over to Jamestown Park Shelter Number 1, our normal shelter over there. Um, they're supposed to have electricity and water turned on. They have it the past two, three times we've done it, and they, can't, they won't guarantee it. I'm like, really? Yeah, that's, well, it's already, paid, it's already paid for. So it's our shelter. Um, we have um, we got people going to the house to cook and to heat the barbecue up, cook potatoes. Uh, Linda, uh, we're, uh, Joe is bringing the pots Wednesday night. Okay, so we'll need to arrange with you. Can you be here Wednesday or do we need? Okay, if you'll be here Wednesday, we'll have the pot for you. Uh, so they're going to do the potatoes. We're going to, um, we're, actually, I'm taking a couple of days off. I'm going to plan on taking a couple of days off the end of the week um, so that I can do the things I need to do. Because we were supposed to have teacher work days, and they canceled one of them. And so I'm like, I'm just gonna take, I'm just, I'll take a couple of sick days and go do what I got to do. Because this is all already planned, you know, to do all the stuff I need, I need to do. Uh, to get ready for Sunday. I'm, I'm expecting to have a good time. Um, we are, so we do need, if you can today, uh, give us your account, uh, and, and payment would be good. If not, we understand you if you need to wait. To, to, but just, we need it. We do need some uh, semi active account. If you've got family you want to bring, again, we don't mind you bringing family. Okay? We're just not going to be doing the, you know, invite the neighborhood that, we, that doesn't come to our church thing. And now I am inviting some staff members from our work uh, to come, you know, and so, um, and then that, they're kind of planning on coming because they got to eat. My, last year I made barbecue for a, um, a after school meal or a lunch. It was, everybody brings something. So I made barbecue and slaw and took it to, and took it to work and made my hot sauce. And some of the guys had, had gone to Parker's before in the past. And they said they love Parker's. So I got, when I got up and he got that little deep fryer on my, my countertop that I have cotton oil in and cooked a couple dozen cornbread sticks and cured it and work and handed it to them. All the coaches sitting there, all sitting there before school going, <laughs> breakfast of champions. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I mean, they were, they were hunkering down on them, baby. I'm like, okay, go for, go for it, guys. Hallelujah. So but that's next Sunday. So we got the park for the afternoon. Um, so come plan on being there. It looks like, according to the uh, extended forecast, we're supposed to have at least a pleasant day. Um, I don't think it's going to be cold, cold. It's going to be hot, hot. I think 60s. 
Um, I don't remember seeing rain unless it changes, but we're, we're in a shelter anyway, so praise the Lord. And uh, we're going to have a nice day, and we're going to eat barbecue. Anybody, anybody want to eat some barbecue? Can I get a witness? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, some of you have already paid me. Y- y'all paid me already? All right. Um, I know Bonnie and the Baileys are paid, and um, the Schubert's are paid, and uh, Penny's paid, and uh, the Hammers are paid. So if you, you know, 650 adults, uh, 450 kids, 10 and under. Um, <clears throat> praise the Lord. And little guys, we don't charge them. I mean, the, the, the two-year-olds, we're not charging them. They're not going to eat anything. I mean, you know, you can feed them off your plate probably, you know. And um, so we're not, we're not charged for those little guys. But, um, you know, we do, we, we're not, we're, because of what I'm doing this year, I mean, we're not going to make budget, okay. There's, the cost of stuff is, you know, uh, requires a certain amount sold in order to do that. I mean, because the oil is $83 just, just for the oil, okay. Um, the cost of the food and all that stuff, and the, you know, the, the extras, not just the meats, but the vinegar, the hot sauce, the, I mean, the, uh, the crushed red pepper, the salt, the mustard, the mayonnaise, all, you know, all the stuff that we have to buy to make it, you know, the more we sell, the more, pro- more profit margin we have that brings back down, our co- we, we, meet our co- we meet our budget, okay? This year, because we're not doing all the extra stuff for the world, um, but I don't care. You know, the church will just cover that, you know, and we'll just be, we'll be good. Amen. And, uh, Lord, you know, if, if, if it's, if we're short, we're just short and the, the church will just cover it. We're good because we, we want to have a good time together. And so I'm not raising the prices is what I'm telling you. We're just not going to raise the prices and, you know, and charge you uh, my meal, my meal, the bar- chicken, barbecue, potato slaw, and cornbread sticks at Smithfield's will cost you $10. And it's not as good. A whole eight-piece chicken with, tw- with 10, 12 hush puppies at Smithfield is $13. Pound of barbecue is 10 So, I mean, you're, you're getting a deal. And it's all-you-can-eat buffet. I mean, hey, you're getting a deal. So, you, you, no, no, if, if you walk away, if you walk away, you pay. If you walk away, you pay. That's our slogan. So you, you pay for what you eat there. If, if you're going to take, you know, uh, three relatives' food home with you, you pay. Okay, that's, that's part of the deal. So when you're, when you're counting on how many you're buying for, if you're planning on pick, getting to go for five, go ahead and pay for five. Okay? Um, and that happened because a number of years ago we had somebody come in. Um, at that time we were taking up offerings to pay for it. And people who, who were more fluent paid large portions, people who didn't, didn't pay anything, and they walked out with 10, 12 plates. And the ones, the ones that paid for the, barely paid for the meal came in um, and didn't get what they wanted, anything they wanted. It was all gone because somebody took 12 plates out. Well, we said, that's it. We, can't, we you know, we got to have some kind of control. Now, that being said, if there are those here that you are in a financial situation where you can't afford do not be embarrassed. Somebody's already given money to cover people who may not have enough money to come. Okay? You just let us know. You just come by and tell me, Pastor, I need, I need help. We will cover you. Okay? You don't have to make an announcement in front of the whole church. You don't have to make a big deal out of it. Just say, I, I, have, I have two and I can't, I can't afford it. I got you covered. Okay? <laughs> I do not want you to say I'm destitute, and that I, you know. But if you're just in that situation, and you know, and it's it's a tight spot, and you just don't have the money, or what for whatever reason, we are not going to deny you being with us because of that. We're going to cover you, okay? And that's what this church does. And so people people in our church, if the church doesn't have to, do it, somebody in our church has already given extra money to cover you. So that's that's the way we are. That's the way we roll here. We're not the Corinthian church. Okay, we look, we read Paul what Paul said. We don't want to get rebuked like that. All righty, praise the Lord, hallelujah. And I'm, I'm guessing Brother Bill's gonna carry a whole weight off his belly next weekend. Yeah, he said they're going on a diet after that, so they're like, 
Yeah, after that. So he's going he's to take out a bunch in his stomach on the day, on that day. Praise the Lord. All right. So we love you. Uh, make sure you get, you know, get your money. If you do send it in through electronic means, make sure you memo it so that we know that's what it's for. Because um, we, otherwise we don't know. We assume that it's, it's offering unless you specifically designate it otherwise. If it's for food, please put barbecue. Just put that's all you got to put on there, barbecue. BBQ. Yes. Uh, to the church. No, this is, it goes to the church. Church covers all this. It's all done with church you know, checks, credit cards, whatever that we use for the church to purchase stuff with. So uh, all the costs is run through the church. This is not this is not Big Ed's barbecue stuff. Okay, or Big Dolls barbecue. Hallelujah. I, I don't, you know, I'm not here to make money on it. Um, praise the Lord. I mean, we could. We could set up a restaurant and probably, you know, knock it out the door, but I don't want to do a $2 million investment at this point in my life. <laughs> Yeah, it's for cost to start up a restaurant now. Full blown unit, land unit, building, startup, startup pay, about a million and a half, two million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. But wouldn't people in this area love it? I, I can see Big Dogs Barbecue out there somewhere. Big, big Dogs Down HQ. All right. You might ready to give. Hallelujah. If you know Jesus said, give it, it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over men, are given to your bosom. If you're ready to give your offering, praise the Lord, go ahead and raise your hand. The ushers will be in the aisle to assist you. Otherwise, if you're giving electronically or by check, you can go ahead and get ready for that. Praise God. And, uh, you know, the Lord bless you. We thank God for the tithe and the offering that's brought into the church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hey, Doug. And, uh, he just, he's watching. Hey, hey, good to see you, man. Glad you joined us. Um, one, of the, one of my uh, groomsmen in my wedding. I, don't, I hadn't seen him in years, but uh, we connect on Facebook. Just love the fact we can say, see how people are doing on Facebook, you know? Um, it's always good to be able to do that, you know what I'm saying? Um, it helps us at least kind of know what people in our past are doing and, um, you know, maybe stay in contact and that kind of thing. We don't always get to see each other because uh, people move and they're, they're everywhere. But it's been kind of nice having that. Forget all the other stupid stuff on social media. You know, all the, the, all the rants and all that stuff. It's just nice to be able to connect, connect with people. Uh, okay? Glory to God. All right. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to give? What's that, Jesse? Okay. Another announcement. You sent me a text. I got an announcement I forgot. Okay? What did I forget, honey? Oh. Children's Fall Festival is Wednesday night here at the church. Okay, over with the children's church, bring them out for the fall festival. This is not a Halloween event. Do not bring them dressed up like Casper. Okay, or the, or the Sith from Star Wars 1 or any other demonic-looking witch or, you know, anything like that. We don't do that. Okay? And if you want to bring them looking like Moses or Aaron or, you know, Jesus or one of the 12 apostles, we'll, we'll go with that, all right? But do not show up in some demon-looking thing. Okay? Yeah, you know, vampire blood dropping down your face and all that stuff. This ain't the place. Okay? Hallelujah. So um, Halloween is a mixture of the Druid, uh, of, of, of Druid stuff and, and the festival of, of All Saints Eve, All Hallowed Eve, All Hallowed Eve, which was a celebration of the saints, and that they mixed in, you know, uh, ga uh, Gaelic demon stuff, and it became Halloween, it became a demonic holiday, so we're going we're to go to the All Hallows, so we're going to celebrate saints, if you want to bring your kid looking like a saint, not a New Orleans saint, make sure I get that specific, you know, we got football people be coming here with, you know, the, the, the Fleur de Lyon and all that kind of stuff, which, you know, no, uh, so. Anyway, there you go. That's Wednesday night, praise God. Don't forget, next Sunday, we're going to get here. We're going to go have our Down East barbecue, fried chicken. You know, I mean, I make Parker's look, you know, amateur when I get done with mine. Hallelujah, praise God. No, no you, you, some of y'all eaten down there before. It's good. This mine's better. Hallelujah. It is. I, I think so, because I had the original recipes. All right, praise God. Y'all ready? In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for the tithe and the offering. We thank you for the people who bless as they bring it to the storehouse. We thank you heaven's windows are opened unto them, and you empty out on them blessings. They don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Go ahead, ushers, receive that. And we'll, as soon as they receive the offering, we will dismiss the children's church and preschool. You guys can go over and be with Miss Janie this morning. Glory to God. And have a good time over there with her. Hallelujah. Amen. All righty. Guys, y'all dismissed. Go ahead. Hallelujah. And the rest of you, go ahead and get your Bibles out and open them up to the book of Job. Yeah, that's right, Job. It is not the book of Job. It is the book of Job. Uh, chronologically, this is the oldest book in the Bible, um, which does give us some insight into some things um, that some revelation and some understanding about God is not revealed. Uh, there, is, there is a knowledge of God to a degree. Uh, we don't have any written doctrine. Um, covenants, statements that God makes. We don't have any of that in writing yet. Um, and so, uh, you know, Job can make, you know, I remember the Bible says here, and we'll read this verse, that, you know, Job says some things that we know are, are, are scripturally inaccurate. It says, in all this, Job did not sin with his lips. So, you know, he was in ignorance. If you say something in ignorance, that's not sinful. Okay? Now, if you know better and say it's sin, him to know what to do right and do with it not, to him it's sin. Y'all here, y'all gone home. How many are still here? Okay, three of you have gone home, apparently, because you didn't know you were still here. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. But uh, we want to talk, talk about turning defeats into victory. Not defeats. We're talking about, come on, guys, you guys are weak this morning. I'm trying to, trying to lighten it up, get you guys hooked up with me here. Um, turning turning t difficult situations, turning what looks like the end, turning what looks like you've had your feet knocked out from under you, you're knocked down on the ground, you're not getting back up, you're getting pounded. Anybody ever felt like that spiritually? I mean, you, got, you feel like you're getting your teeth punched out. I mean, you know, everything in the world's come against you. The devil's just gone, gone cray-cray on you. And there are times you can get there, and let me say this, you do not have to stay there. You do not have to acquiesce to the attack of the enemy. You don't have to throw in the towel and give up. And even though it looks like you're not coming out, you know, the Bible tells us that you know, when, when we look at Jesus, when we see Jesus going to the cross, when we see the Bible saying, who for the joy that was set before him endured the shame. What joy? He knew on the other side of the cross he was coming out victorious. He knew he was coming out conqueror. He knew he was coming out king of kings and lord of lords. Hallelujah. But he had to endure that season. He had to endure that darkness. He had to endure that apparent defeat that looked like to everyone around him. The disciples scattered. People mocked him. People laughed. Everything went on. I mean, they were just all uptight and upset and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, Jesus knew what was coming through. He knew what was coming out on the other side. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he walked through that out with him, praise God. All because he did not quit in the midst of what looked like defeat. He even cried on the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But then he began to declare. I will declare thy name in the midst of my brethren. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. In the congregation of the righteous. Hallelujah. I want you to know that the 22nd Psalm. I want you see, we all love the 23rd. I love the 22nd. Hallelujah. That's Jesus at the cross. That's his confession. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. They looked upon me. My bones are, you know, are out of joint. My heart is melted in the midst of my bowels. You know, he goes on and on and on. But in the midst of the congregation, I will praise thy name. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory to God in the midst of the congregation. He will praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how bad things are. It doesn't matter how difficult they can be that when the, when the tough 
the tough things come. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. If we will but stand our ground, take a hold of the sharp two-edged sword, the Word of God, and put it on the devil, glory to God, and say, I will not be defeated. I will not quit. I will not allow you to overcome me. I will win. I will rise. I will walk in the land of the living. Glory to God. I will walk in the blessing of God. I will fulfill the destiny on my life. Glory to God. And even as Brother Bill said last year, I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Glory to God. And here he is today. Glory to God. I want you to know. Ain't no devil in hell. Ain't no power anywhere that can overcome the faith of a believer in the work of Jesus Christ as they stand up and say, I will not be defeated. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan. I, I just, I always kind of get a kick when you read in the um, Bible. You begin to see after Satan's been loose for a thousand years and before he's thrown into the lake of fire, the bottomless pit, the second death, we will say, is this he who caused the nations to tremble? We're going to look at Satan and go, dude, you've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. The little wizard of Oz over there with his machine making all the smoke, making all the, you know, all the scary stuff and trying to, you know, do all this stuff. That's all Satan is. Right. Are you here? You're going home. So Job, maybe we kind of go back to our, our, you know, Job gets into that state of desolation. I mean, it's so bad. Now, now remember, now, if we read the book of Job, you need to read the, at least the first three chapters of Job to get a feel for what's going on there. Uh, we've used Job as the um, suffering book. We've used Job's uh, situation as a, you know, uh, definitive proof that God does stuff to you. That the reason you're sick, the reason you lost money, the reason, you know, uh, you lost, you know, a loved one. God did it. I'm sorry. God's the giver of life. God doesn't, doesn't steal, kill, or destroy. He doesn't rob you of, of things that are precious to you. The enemy does. That doesn't mean if you lose a loved one that, that, that uh, they don't go to heaven. That doesn't mean I'm saying God doesn't, doesn't bring destruction to your life through loss. Now, Job, Job, uh, he, he kind of had this thing going on. You know, he, 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 was, he, he was righteous. He eschewed evil, hated evil. But his kids weren't living right. Matter of fact, they were a bunch of rebel drunks. Every, you know, all of his kids, every time they had a birthday, they had to have a two-week love fest. Or actually, you know, what kind of love fest? Love beer fest. They'd all get together and get drunk for a couple of weeks. And after the birthday celebration was over, dad would call all the kids back to the house, and he would sacrifice and, you know, offer because he, he said they may, have, they may have sinned in their heart and cursed God. He was just living in fear. that They were, they were just going to go to hell, you know. And um, so one day, you know, the, the evil day comes, everything comes, everything gets destroyed, the kids all get killed, you know. And um, chapter 3 tells us that, that Job said, that which I was afraid of came on me. That which I greatly feared has befallen me. He opened the door through fear. Now, if you'll read, if you'll read some of Job there with that understanding, when, when Satan goes to God and says, you know, does Job serve God for naught? You know, he knows you'll protect him. And God says, everything of his is in your hand except you can't touch his life. Why? Because he didn't fear for his own life. Fear opened the Satan was coming to find out if he had spiritual authority to do something, and God had to answer his question. Because God operates on justice and on spiritual law. Y'all hear you go home. And so, um, as, as Job was doing those things, he never feared for himself. 
But, you know, I mean, after all this stuff's out there, he's got boils on his body, you know, big open boils. He's out there in the ash heat scraping, his, scraping with a pot shirt, you know. And I don't know if there was some healing cure to, to ash on, on boils or whatever. I don't know. Or you just, just messed up or whatever. I, I, can, I can tell you, having open sores all over your body does not, cannot be a good feeling. I mean, how many of you ever had just a big zit? And, and, and just been ashy. Ladies and gentlemen, so you know, Lubriderm will fix that. <laughs> if you ashy. Okay? All right. See, now pasty folk don't get ashy. That you can see. <laughs> that you can see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. How do we get over there? Stop it. I'm trying to teach. But he's out there scraping, his, scraping the boys. His wife comes to him. Faith woman. Curse God and die. Does that still retain thy integrity? Chapter 2, verse 9. Curse God and die. He said, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Yeah. He just said, woman, you're an idiot. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Shall we not receive evil? So this is where we get some of this stuff. He's just out of, he's out of, um, anguish he's out of whatever um and the bible says and all this he did not sin with his lips he wasn't he was in ignorance he didn't understand why this door had opened i mean he said it was fear he didn't understand the connection okay as as we go through the bible and more revelation comes to the word of god we begin to understand fear is an open door to the enemy as this being the oldest book in the bible he doesn't have that he doesn't have revelation so God's not going to hold him accountable of sin for saying something that he's ignorant about. Okay? That does not mean that condones that as an accurate statement that we'll receive evil from the hand of God. <clears throat> God tempteth no man with evil. Go read James. I mean, every good and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Amen? The thief cometh not for. I, I'm going to quote Jesus. Everybody, you know, everybody know who Jesus is? Head of the church, the master. Anybody think Jesus knew what he was talking about? Can I get 100% on that one? Okay. Now, if Jesus says something, forget the, forget, the, forget the preachers, forget the PhDs, forget the masters, forget all that stuff. We did find out that PhD meant post hole digger. Because we, we found out some people say some stuff that post hole diggers would know better than say. Okay? But if Jesus says something, I think we can take it to the bank. <clears throat> and Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, the thief, the thief, now I'm going to quote King Jimmy, the thief cometh not but for two. Now let me, let me put it, that's King James for the only reason the thief comes is. Okay? The thief cometh not but for to kill, steal, and destroy. The thief kills. The thief destroys. The th Amen? The thief steals, kills, and destroys. Thesis, uh, antithesis. I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So the thesis is that if it steals, kills, and destroys, it's the thief. If it's life, it's God. The antithesis to the statement that Satan kills, steals, and destroys is Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We got so many people preaching and teaching that God steals, kills, and destroys for some unknown reason that we miss. He came to give us life and give us this more abundantly. What if I've had loss in my past and I didn't realize I thought God had done it? You were ignorant. And I'm not saying that in a condescending way. If you don't know something, you're ignorant of it. You, don't have not, you didn't have knowledge of it. That's, being ignorant doesn't mean stupid. Ignorant means you don't know something. You're ignorant of the subject. It's not a condescending. We use it that way sometimes, but that's not accurate. It is, it is a reference to the fact of the lack of knowledge of something. There, let me tell you something. Uh, my, uh, microbiology, I am ignorant of. 
I'm just, I'm actually, I might even be stupid. Okay, but I'm ignorant of that subject, all right? You could be ignorant of things in the Bible and of the character of God, and it doesn't mean that you don't love God, and it doesn't mean that God doesn't love you, and it doesn't mean uh, uh, that you were, you were um, somehow bad against God because you believed something that wasn't accurate. Okay? It just means you were ignorant on the subject. But God wants you to know he loves you. God's on your side. God's for you. He's always been there. And when bad things happen, why do bad things happen to good people? Because there's a bad devil out there. We're in a fallen world. And we have to learn to exercise our authority. And listen, folks, there are, there are a lot of people who've gone through life who don't learn until later. You know, many times, many years later, that they, had, they have authority and, and there are different things, and they did not know. And things happened in their life they had no control over because they didn't know what to do. They couldn't have done anything about it because they didn't know. God still loves you, but it wasn't God who, who tried to hurt you. Okay? But, but, so, but Joe's in this state of despair, absolute despair. And on top of that, he gets a bunch of weenified counselors who start show, showing up and trying to tell him why all this happened. I got the why. Bad devil. Mean devil. Devil hates the things of God. He hates the people that want to serve God. He wants to hurt people. Why? Because humanity was created. Even in our fallen state, there is still the resemblance of the image of God that we were created in. He hates it. He wants to bring the structure to it. Why do you think today there's so much... Um, and I don't even know, there's, there's, a, there's a psychological term for all the stuff that is going on now. You know, all the huge gauges and the bolts in the face and the, you know, the tattooing the faces and putting, you know, um, uh, reptilian uh, implants in so you look like a lizard and it's cutting the tongue in half and all this kind of stuff. Huh? It's body mutilation, but there's, another, there's, a, there's, a, there's a psychological term for it. Uh, and let me tell you what, it, it, do, it, it doesn't mean that they're normal. Cray, cray. But let me say this. It's because of the children of darkness, Satan hates what God created, and they're doing, he's doing everything to disfigure what God created. He's doing everything he can to disfigure that because he hates humanity. People think they're serving the devil. They're going to have a joy ride. He hates them. He's, he's just looking forward to taking them to hell for eternity and watching them suffer while he suffers. Because he hates God's creation. So Job is sitting here in this state of despair. How many of you have ever been in a state of despair? I know those of you watching on the Internet, those here, we've had things happen. We've lost loved ones that were precious to us. Questions come. Why? And we don't, we don't, we, we, a lot of times we don't have a, a quid pro quo answer of the specific reason why this happened. The, the simplest answer is Satan hates God's creation. He wants to bring hurt. He wants to bring destruction. He wants to bring misery. Okay? That's why I tell people all the time, even in the midst of loss, only the comforter can bring comfort. It's not comforting to say God had a reason. That can't bring comfort. God knows what he's doing. Because the person's sitting there going, why would a good God do this? Why would a good God kill this person? Run over my baby with a truck. Have someone walk up and shoot him in the head. Hello? All the, all the accidental things. Um, you know, somebody, some, some young man not too long ago fell into farm equipment got killed. I mean, why would God do that? He didn't. This is a fallen world. It's a cursed world. We're children of light walking in this, but it's still a cursed world out there. 
And we have to exercise our authority to walk above and, su and superior to the, to the powers of this world. Amen. Though we're in this world, we're not of this world. We're still in it, folks. There's still evil here. I'm so far away from where I was going, I, I'm going to have to wait until next week to get back. <laughs> We, we get people who are counseled and told by well-meaning ministers who, who are just act, in, inaccurate. Well, you know, God had a reason. I remember going to a funeral one time and a um, family member, relative, you know, their uh, in-law, their, their, their dad had passed away and the preacher got up. And I liked the man. I mean, he would come to, he would come to Parker's all, a lot and eat up there. And I would sit there and we'd have talks and, you know, he would, you know, nice man. Just didn't know what he was talking about. He started preaching the funeral. And God looked over the heavenly banister and saw this rose in the earth. And he plucked it from the earth to put on the heavenly mantle. And the family's over there going, yeah, 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 that's right, that's right, that's right. God don't need no roses on his mantle. He receives us when we come home. He doesn't snatch us out of the earth. Are you here? He's not down here, you know, uh, like some Star Trek, uh, you know, beaming machine, what, uh, transporter, beaming up random people. You know, oh, this is your day. Here you go. And leaving everybody else to suffer with the unknown. I know this. God says, I'm good. There is none good but God. The king of Jesus said, good master. He said, why callest thou me good? For there is none good save God alone. Again, we quote James. There are every good and every perfect gift coming down from the Father above whom there is no variable and no shadow of turning. God is a good God. Amen. How shall he who spared not his own son, not also with him, freely give us all things that pertain to life and godliness? Amen. How good is our God? Amen. Now, if you're his enemy, you can get yourself in a heap of trouble. Y'all hear you gone home. I mean, a heap of trouble. But to his children, God is good. When I say heap of trouble, God's not going around looking to get people. When you're cursing God and, and mocking God, that's not a smart thing to do. Okay? He's not, he's not coming looking for you, trying to take you out. We have one case of that in the Bible. He went looking for somebody. Y'all remember who it was? Well, that Paul, two cases, one Old Testament, one new. Moses. He didn't circumcise his son. And was going to go into a situation where he was in violation of the covenant. And apparently, he didn't get you know his wife. His wife got mad and they circumcised him on the spot, you know, and uh, she wasn't happy about it. But anyway, that's because he was he was he was going outside the covenant to do what God told him to do. He was breaking. He was covenant. He was covenant breaking. And then Paul was the Mister T anointing that day. Get saved, or you're going to hell now, fool. All right? I mean, it was, it was not a joy ride. Jesus didn't come down for a social visit. He got knocked off the horse, and, and Paul goes, Who art thou, Lord? Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> um, you're Lord. I think you're alive. I believe you're alive. I'm looking at you. Um, and later he writes, if you, see, if you say with your mouth, He's Lord, and leave your heart, God raised you from the dead, you're saved. He had that revelation. Okay? But I'm trying to, as believers, God's not looking to hurt you. Pain doesn't make you a better believer. Are you here? Destitute hearts that are um, desolate, hearts that are broken, don't make better believers. God loves you. God pours in the oil of, and salve of joy. God heals. God restores. God doesn't kill. God doesn't steal. 
God doesn't destroy. He's the giver of life. Amen? And so we're going to talk about next week, we're going to begin to talk about the examples out throughout the Old Testament of um, people that were in desolate places. And we'll start out with the children of Israel at the Red Sea. That's a good one. Now that bunch, you know, God comes out, he's, he's, he's fed and said, I'll just get rid of this bunch and get you a whole new bunch, Moses. <laughs> Moses said, well, not the God of heaven do right with the Lord, not repent, you know, and uh, so forth. And uh, God, okay, a couple weeks later, Moses is going out there, Lord, wipe them out. <laughs> See what you're talking about. Take them out. I mean, you know, he, spent, he goes off for 40 days to worship God, comes back. They've already built golden calves, worshiping the idols, having whoredoms all down there. And they've only been out, you know, only been out of Egypt a couple of weeks. Didn't take them long to forget. Dear Lord, help us. Amen? So I just said, God didn't put us on the mantle. When we take us out of the earth, we go, we go to our own mansion. I'll just take a little old log cabin over in the corner of heaven. I want Dean's house. Y'all remember the joke? You know, Mike, Mike Krzyzewski dies and he goes to heaven and he gets here and the Lord takes him over to his place and, you know, and it's a nice place, over there, all that and everything and He's like, look around, then he looks over and sees this huge house. Carolina flags lining the driveway. I mean, all this kind of stuff. And, and, and Krzyzewski looks at the Lord and says, how come Dean got something like that? He said, well, that's not Dean's house, it's mine. <laughs> Couldn't pass it up. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's like, let's say, God's not a Tar Heel, why is the sky Carolina blue? I mean, we got them all, you know. And we know God's not a Tar Heel. He's not, definitely not a Blue Devil. He's not a Demon Deacon either. All our theological schools use devils or demons in, in, in their names. Something's wrong with this. You know. So, but next week we're going to get into some examples throughout where they were in a desolate situation where there was no hope. Yet they turned to God and God brought them out with a strong arm. Amen. Amen. And so we'll get into that next week. All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, remember, Jesus brings you out. Stay in faith. Don't, don't turn your back on, on your answer. Don't blame God for what the devil's doing. Amen? And try I, I love this one. The Lord put sickness on me. I don't understand why. I'm trying to figure out why. And then run to the doctor to get rid of what the Lord put on him to teach him something. If the Lord put it on you, then you need to figure out and, and stay with him long to figure out why he put it on you so he can take it back off of you when you learn whatever lesson it is you're supposed to learn. Now, that's all stupid talk. But no, the Lord puts it on you. You run to the doctor to try to get rid of, rid of the gift of the Lord. What you should be doing is say, Lord, give me a double portion. Well, I wouldn't do that. Why? Because I don't want this. Why? Because it's evil. I said it's evil. Amen. That went over big. Thank you for your enthusiasm. All right. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that we can walk in victory through the power of God, through your word. And Father, I thank you as we develop this series and this teaching that you'll be able to bring inspiration, bring understanding, bring strength to the hearts of the believers so they can walk by faith and not by sight in the midst of desolate, difficult, horrible situations, they can arise and come out victorious without the smell of smoke, without the rope, the bonds that held them down, have them come out victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, we love you. God bless you. Uh, those who join us by internet today, thank you for joining us. And remember this, that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And I got one more thing for you. When you're going through hell, don't stop. Keep going till you come out on the other side. Amen? Do not stop and pack and, and, and get out the picnic lunch and start having a picnic in the middle. God bless you. We'll see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. God bless you. Today.